Well, thank you for all of our students who participated and in that video. So again, this year's conference is about using blockchains to make the world a better place. And all of our in-depth conversations and our panels are gonna be focused on that topic. But there is no single company here today that can do it by themselves. It takes a community. And that's why we have a blockchain for business conference so that we can bring a community together. So as I go through these talking points, I really would like to invite the audience to use Brella to post some comments, share your ideas for how we can use blockchains to make the world a better place. Okay, so first I'm gonna bring you down, then I'm gonna bring you back up. As human beings, we face some really wicked global problems on this planet. Whether we're talking about global warming or pandemics or the proliferation of fake news or the fact that we have millions of refugees or we have millions of people that don't have access to financial services or crises in our supply chains that lead to things like outages, food recalls, counterfeit drugs or just trying to have many people that can't prove their identity or their credentials on the internet. So it seems a little bit overwhelming, but I'm gonna give you a thought that hopefully will make you feel very empowered. And that thought is this, the future is emergent, not deterministic. Okay, what does that mean? You know, there's so many times where people will say to me, Mary, what's technology going to be like, you know, five to 10 years from now? And I always answer that question in the very same way. I don't know. I don't know because the future is not predestined. The future emerges based on the choices we make as individuals and as a collective today. I believe that we can come together as a community and we can save the planet. And you're gonna hear some really innovative ideas today like using NFTs to save our oceans. I believe that we already have businesses that don't just add economic and social value but also deliver in a sustainable way. And then what I'm really most excited about is that we can have a world where power and control is decentralized and includes everybody. So if you think about all of the technical capabilities that a blockchain enables, decentralization is the technical feature that inspires me and gives me the most hope. Okay, so since this is a technology conference, let's talk about the specific role that technology plays in building a better world. And so I have a powerful statement here that says, you know, we can build a better world with technology if we build that world based on ethical principles. So technology is not neutral. We can either use these technologies for malevolent or benevolent purposes. And it all depends on whether that design is based on ethical principles or not. So I'm sure you can all think of some technologies that are not doing what we want them to do. You could think about social media platforms that are destroying the confidence of our young women or the use of fake news that is really undermining our politics, our elections, our health and our well-being. And I believe we have those apps because they, those were made with an ethical void. But conversely, because we have the power of choice, we can develop applications to make the world better. So at this point, I really want you to go to the Brella application. We're gonna do a word cloud. And I want the audience to think about, if you want a world that has better, better outcomes, what kind of ethical principles should we build it on? And I'll start with one example. So I believe we should build the world with user control. That means possession and control over their data. Not just consent that some trusted third party can do what they want with your data, but that you actually possess it and control who sees your data. So that's one of my favorite ethical principles. What are some of yours? And then later on, we're gonna look at your word cloud and discuss it. Okay, so here at the Blockchain Center of Excellence, we do study applications that are hopefully making and addressing some of these wicked problems in the world. And so I'd like to share some of those with you now. Okay, so what can we do about fake news? 
This is really difficult because now we're really got a tussle of two principles that we hold dear. Freedom of speech on one hand versus truth on the other. And where do you draw the line? And that is very challenging. So one of the case studies that we did at the Blockchain Center of Excellence was from ANSA. Now, ANSA is Italy's top newswire agency. They post like almost 4,000 stories a day. And they were really being plagued with a certain type of fake news called imposter news. So that means people were posting things that were completely false, but doing it by mimicking the ANSA brand. So for example, in 2020, people were posting homemade remedies, which of course were wrong, for COVID-19 and making it look like it came from ANSA. So what could they do about it? So they went to one of the Blockchain Center of Excellence partners here, EY, and said, can you help us prevent imposter news? So EY and ANSA got together and they developed something called ANSA Check. And so this is, this is used to authenticate that a news story has come from ANSA. And they do it by hashing the story and posting the hash on the Ethereum network. Then ANSA readers, when they're looking at digital content online, can click on the ANSA Check sticker. It can ping Ethereum and come back and either verify that it's authentic or it's been tampered with or it's not authentic. So far, they've posted over 500,000 news stories to Ethereum. So while it's not the definitive solution, it's certain, certainly an important start. So I also put on this slide the URL. So the papers and the case studies I'm talking about, you can download from blockchain.uark.edu forward slash research. Okay, let's look at another example. So we study a lot in supply chains here at the University of Arkansas, given that we have the number one supply chain department here. And our partners are really focused on developing supply chains that are based on these ethical principles, right? Transparency in our supply chains. Where, do, where does our food and drugs come from? Authenticity. Are we really eating and consuming the food and drugs we think we are? Making sure that our foods and drugs are safe that we're promoting animal welfare, that we're promoting human health, that every, every member of the supply chain is following sustainable practices, and most importantly, that everyone in our supply chain is following fair labor practices, no forced labor. And you'll be hearing from some of our leaders discussing these topics today. My current project is on digital health passes. And I started this project in March of this year with my colleague, Professor Aran Carmel from American University. Because we realize that you know, getting a vaccination is just one part of trying to help solve this global pandemic. We're also gonna have to verify our health so we can all get back to school and we can have a face-to-face -face conference next year, hopefully. Um, and so we wanted to you know, really look at if we choose to develop digital health passes, either as a government or a business, what are the ethical principles that that should be built on? So we joined a global consortium called the Good Health Pass Collaborative. There are 150 public and private sectors. I circled some of the logos you see the University of Arkansas circled on there. And we said, if companies or governments are going to use digital health passes that they should be based on these 10 ethical principles. Now, I don't have time to go over all of them, but I'll just mention two. One is the idea of choice, that nobody should mandate that you have to use a digital health pass. We as individuals and human beings should have the right to decide whether we want to use them or not. Another principle I'll call out is inclusivity. So we should not assume in this world that everybody has a $500 cell phone or access to the internet. So this ethical principle says we need to have paper-based versions of digital credentials as well so that we can include more people if they choose to use these applications. So you're gonna hear a lot more about digital health passes if you wanna join that breakout conversation this afternoon. Now this is really, I'm really excited about this and I'm writing the next white paper on this topic. So health credentials is only one type of verifiable credentials. 
There's actually a global movement to make the next iteration of the internet based on this idea of self-sovereign identity, where each individual will possess and control any credential made about them. And I put some of the logos up here of the nonprofits and the consortia working on this. The Blockchain Center of Excellence is involved in the Trust Over IP Foundation. So this is also going to have consequences like if we design the internet better, Internet 3.0, that we won't have to have accounts and passwords anymore. Everything will be peer-to-peer -peer, and it will be enabled by decentralized identifiers and blockchain technology. Okay, and all of these institutions are designing ethical principles for self-sovereign identity and verifiable credentials. So at this point, I would like to invite somebody to join our conversation. So we have Cindy Mooring. I'm so pleased to have her in the College of Business right now. Cindy, as I mentioned, was the Chief Ethics and Compliance Officer at Walmart and has since joined, and she is the co-founder and the Executive Director of our Business Integrity Leadership Initiative. So Cindy, are you in the house yet? There she is. Cindy, welcome. I hope the audience can hear you because I can't quite hear you. Okay, we'll wait just a second and make okay, sure. We're good. we're good to go. So Cindy, thank awesome. you for joining me today. So what the first thing I want to do is ask you, can you share with the audience what we are doing in the Walton College in terms of business ethics in general and tech ethics specifically? I sure can. And um, welcome to all of you to this very exciting conference. And there is a lot of information that is packed into this and ethical principles and what we're doing in Walton College is kind of wrapped into everything, Mary, that you said at the beginning that you all are going to be talking about and exploring. So what we're doing at Walton College is taking this opportunity that we have to be a more influential, strategic, and leading public and private. Uh, well, among public and private, a leading public university um, on the topic of business integrity. It is something that applies to everyone, uh, every student. And when you get out into the working world, it applies as well. And I think many don't recognize that until they bump up against some ethical issues, including tech ethics issues um, that they weren't quite prepared for. So with the direction of Dean Waller, we created this strategic business integrity leadership initiative to better prepare our students so that Walton College could um, make sure that the students we're sending out into the working world have a really strong, solid foundation foundation and understanding of ethical principles, including tech ethics. And so we are working to integrate that across the business curriculum in some really creative, innovative ways, uh, which are fun and engaging for the students and the communities. We're also working um, to bring the business community closer to the university itself on this important topic. And we have this really exciting six semester, three year rolling program Program where we talk, it's called Let's Talk, about one of the basic six ethics principles each semester. And next semester, that topic is going to be tech ethics. And the Let's Talk program specifically is uh, geared around a speaker uh, program. We bring in three to four speakers and we have a really great book of the semester that we all read together. It's available to the community to uh, staff, to faculty, and to students, of course. Uh, we are in the middle of a program this semester. Our last speaker had over 1,100 people sign up to listen, but next semester, it's gonna be all geared around tech ethics. Uh, in addition to that, we also have, um, I have a, a, a video uh, podcast series called The Biz, The Business Integrity School, that complements the Let's Talk program each semester. So next semester, that program is going to be focused, The Biz, the video podcast series, on all things tech ethics. They come out once a week, the video podcasts do. You can find them under The Biz on you know Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I'm going to drop the link to my website so you can find them there as well. But for 15 weeks, you're going to get an episode a week that's 
that's going to be focused on tech ethics. We're going to be able to go deeper with our very own Mary Lassity. Um, <laughs> some folks already from um, Microsoft, some folks from Deloitte, uh, and others who have already uh, Live Ramp, who's uh, one of the companies here in Arkansas as well, uh, but really get some great expertise on that. So I encourage you to think about um, continuing your conversation here beyond blockchain, which is just one technology which is being used in great ways um, to, to promote uh, ethical uh, use of technology. But I encourage you to go deeper and um, extend your knowledge by participating in some of these programs that we're going to be continuing into next year as part of this overall strategic initiative at Walton College. One more important thing, Mary, I wanna, I wanna mention is that we um, have received a grant from the Deloitte Foundation mm, yes. to, to create um, uh, something that really doesn't exist right now, which is a tech ethics curriculum. It will be open sourced. We are doing it in a concert with three other leading universities, uh, Notre Dame, uh, Duquesne and University of Virginia. We are going to be creating with them and some other really smart folks on this topic, uh, a curriculum that will be able to be adaptable by various universities to be used as a, um, a credential guide where they could create a credential from it, perhaps a minor in this topic or even included as a particular um, uh, module in a course or even a major in it, but it's gonna be open source. And the whole point is we want to be able to improve the quality of higher education on this particular topic because it truly is gonna affect all of our lives. Mary gave you some examples there at the beginning um, of her talk, but there are, there are, I mean, it's everywhere. It's whether, you know, what they're using it to determine, you know, credit applications and, and whether or not that's being used fairly. Uh, between men and women in terms of the review of the applications, you know, resumes and their review when you submit them um, to a company and whether or not it's really pulling out the right resumes, that can be a, another particular issue. Self-driving cars, I'm sure we're all interested in that, but um, we've had a few crashes along the way, so we've got to figure out how to do that better. And I think what we've recognized is as we move through this issue, and one of the things we'll explore in these topics that we're, that we're going to be focusing on for next semester is this idea of interdisciplinarity, um, which, you know, in a, in, a, in a school context will kind of mean across disciplines, not just marketing, not just IS, uh, uh, not just um, uh, uh, management. And in a business sense, it would mean interdisciplinarity is you don't create tech ethics by just having the engineers do it or, you know, just having your IS department doing it, but thinking about it, you know, more across the organization, um, like scrum team and how you need people from all the different disciplines to be together, uh, to, to, to look at the issue from different points of view so that you can create technology that truly does embody the ethical principles and you've thought about all the different contexts of it. Mary even mentioned forced labor and modern day slavery and that's a really great specific example of how blockchain specifically um, and that type of technology is now being used so that from afar we can um, within the world actually see and track where modern day slavery is occurring. And it's a great tool and technology is now being used for good by many companies to look further back in the supply chain, which is a huge requirement now for big companies, and to be able to monitor and ensure that there is no forced labor that's being involved, involved in the creation of their products. So and there's a, so much to talk about on this topic, <laughs> but I'll stop and leave it there. I will tell you that in the field of ethics, Tech ethics is the next green field. I mean, that is where we all need to go and where we all need to focus our efforts. I'm so fortunate to have Mary on my academic advisory board and she and I are on this journey together. And I hope that you'll join us on this journey and that we can continue the conversation because it's a big one and we're all gonna have to participate to figure this out. Well, I think the audience can certainly appreciate how much positive energy you're bringing to the Walton College on this topic, Cindy. One of the things that really impressed me is that our first students that really graduated with one of the badges in ethics, they, they shared with you, um, that was the main conversation they had on their job interviews. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? 
Sure. Yeah. So these programs that I mentioned, um, the students can get e-credentials is what, you know, in the business community, we would call it. At the student level, we call it badges. I've created one for business integrity kind of broadly, and also badges that the students can get by participating in programs on one of the six basic business ethics principles like tech ethics. And of course, what we want is for that to be valuable, not just for the student in terms of education, but to really make a difference for the employer. And sure enough, uh, we've already had that come full circle. So one of the early students who got uh, one of the e-certifications and, and she's able to display that then on her LinkedIn resume as well as or her LinkedIn profile, as well as on her resume, sure enough was more than one was asked about it during the interview process. Uh, and, you know, essentially the recruiter is like, oh, my goodness, after they heard the student explain what it was, that's exactly the kind of person that we want to hire. I think everyone knows we want to, you want to hire people who know how to lead and act with integrity, but figuring out that competency and whether or not somebody really has it and is going to be the kind of employee with the kind of, you know, character and thought processes that you want is hard and it's hard to figure out in an interview. So when students are able to display proactively and explicitly that they spent time learning about that and they're able to talk about it in an interview, it was so impactful that, again, the person interviewing said, oh, my gosh, that's exactly the kind of person we want to hire. She, in fact, got the job. She's been working there in a co-op capacity ever since. Um, it's a Fortune 500 company, and she's now considering whether or not she wants to go and continue to work there full time. So we're going to be creating more and more of these use cases so that we are able to show the real value, not just to the student, but also to the business community. Um, I, I Datify, I know you mentioned that too, Mary. This is one of the credentials that um, uh, I'm also working with the, the founder of I Datify to make sure that shows up on their I Datify, um, their, their resume that they can create through that. And it's just, it, it's incredible coming, seeing it come full circle, um, which is what we want. And for employers to be able to see that the Walton College is really helping to promote the right kind of business leaders coming out of the college. That's great, Cindy. And we also, you and I and Deloitte and Microsoft will be at the Northwest Arkansas Tech Summit also talking about tech ethics. So at this point, I wanted to bring up our word cloud from the audience, but I'm, I'm trying to signal to the production team my Slido crashed. So um, maybe as Shri Vidya, either you can bring me, please bring me up your computer. And I'll read these to you, Cindy. So let's see what our audience thought about what are some important tech ethic principles. Just come on in. Come on in, Shri Vidya. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, so normally, Cindy, we see privacy as the number one word. But guess what word we have here today? Transparency. Yeah. I'm not I, surprised, given that we I, have so many supply chain focused people here, too. I'm going to read out a couple of other things to you, Cindy, and I'll get your reaction. So people said truth, honesty, decentralized governments, humanity first, visibility, equal access. Ooh, I love self-sovereign ID and empowerment. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about our audience's preferred ethical principles? You know, what I think that I see is a mega thing coming out of all of those is the human element in it, right? I mean, it, it, technology, you know, running amok, uh, which, it, which it can do almost kind of feels like the Wild West or the streets of Bangladesh, if you've ever been there, which I have, which is like traffic running in all directions and accidents all the time. And there aren't any, there isn't any, any kind of rules of governance and there's no rules of the road. And, and there's not kind of the rule of law that would set it up. And when I think about that related to technology, what I hear coming through in all of those principles is this marrying together that there has to be with with technology that is understandable, that is explainable, uh, and that humans are able to influence it in order to be able to use it for good so that it doesn't sort of run amok and cause problems for society. Yes, and Cindy, you and I have often talked about this too. You know, the ethical principles are just the starting point, right? So it's really about how do you create this and embed it as a culture? And so I think that's going to be one of the topics that we'll talk about at, at the summit together. Yes. 
Well, Cindy, I want to just thank you not only for today, but for everything you have done for the Walton College. I really believe that our focus on ethics is going to really serve to differentiate the Walton College from many other business schools and giving them a solid foundation, not only in their disciplines, but in tech and business ethics, I think will serve our students and our employers and our alumni quite well. So thank you so much for today. You're welcome. Have a great conference. It's going to be fabulous, I'm sure. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. Bye. So for our audience, next, what I would like you to do is now we're going to officially start our game. So go to the Brella app and the first person, you'll be the leader, the first person who answers our blockchain trivia correctly, well, you're going to get a jump up on our start. Okay, and now I believe we are going to go to break. <laughs> 